Hello, my dears. I am your favorite purple lady, Amethyst Lady, and we are back with another awesome video. This time, the theme of this video is for Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. Some things I would like to see within New Genesis, particularly five things I would love to see within New Genesis. So, uh, with me for this video, I do have bedtime buddy with the return say hello yep voice of the people's right here There's yeah. no e. <laughs> thank you very much for joining me and uh what we're gonna do just to give the format is i'm just gonna go over five things i would like to see and we're just gonna have a little bit of a discussion also as you can see this discussion is happening while i'm streaming you can definitely catch me i stream at least three times a week on Twitch, it is twitch.tv, Amethyst Lady. You can catch me, follow your purple lady, okay? <laughs> I'd appreciate it, thank you very much. But all right, let's get into it. So um, first and foremost, one of the things that I would love to see is the return of the casino in NGS. I would love to see a casino, just put one, please put it in central city like i know the argument is it might be that we have a casino and base game but i would love to just see some updated graphics um maybe a new game or two return of some old games i would just love to see that sort of thing in ngs i don't think it would be a bad idea also um you could include like maybe an event space i know we have central city there's like a stage and a big screen there which is cool but even still it would be nice to have like another event space and i think it would be really nice if it also had a stage um just something that's really festive and fun and uh it, it would allow for more community activities especially because I can't tell you how fun it was in base game to have just a casino night with the Alliance and friends. So, um, what do you think about that? Um, <clears throat> I think the Alliance, I mean, the Alliance, the casino sounds cool. Um, it's not really like, you know, people talk about, you can just go to base game and enjoy the casino or whatever, but like, who's really trying to take that step down like that? Like graphic fidelity and all that. Plus, we already been there, done that, done experienced that casino. It's time for some new stuff, put some new flavor in there. Um, being an MMO vet, like, what kind of casino activities would you say are present in like other games that you would like to see in this one? Um, well, I mean, a popular example is the Gold Saucer in Final Fantasy XIV. They have everything from racing to platforming. Um, they have Triple Triad, which, you know, if you played Final Fantasy VIII, then you know all about that game. But they had it as a standalone, and they had even the ability to get cards for that game, doing various things out in the world. So it was really cool. They just had a, a good variety of different things for people to do. So I wouldn't mind seeing, like, some racing and um, bringing back black yak and the slots are always super cool and um just having another way to not only interact with the game have some fun community activities but something else to um get a way to exchange different things different fun things you know like bring back fun points just put them in the casino do something like that that would be really cool so would you would, would you have everything be RNG based or would you like have a few head to head things that players can do? It would be cool to actually have both just for some variety, because I know everyone doesn't like RNG. Um, I know a lot of the community is kind of had it with RNG up to a point. So I think a good blend of games that offer both would be very, very nice. I see and some type of exchange shop, I suppose, for um, time spent in the casino. Maybe like if you get some kind of casino currency and 
you can exchange the casino currency for certain rewards, skins, weapons, stuff like that. Absolutely. Like I said, just bring back fun points, but have the fun points be the new casino currency. That way you get that hint of nostalgia and you still get another functional currency that can only be used in the casino and, um, you know, that, that people can ident identify with the casino. Yeah, I pretty much agree with that. All right, cool. Well, let's move on to the next point. The next thing that I would love to see is the return of personal quarters. I would love for personal quarters to come back. I know that was a way for people to advertise their crafting and another place to meet up with friends and alliance mates. And um, you could even have people who were curious just come in and see your quarters. I think it's just a really nice thing that would spruce up the game. Um, you could just have them be in, say, central LEO like the city or just have people have the ability to get to their personal quarters from any of the city viewers. if you can't do or if you can do it um, if you can't do that though just being able to access them from say the central city viewer would probably be best um, what do you think hmm yeah I think uh I think it's, it's pretty pretty interesting like uh just like being able to have uh, more like more options overall you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um i don't think i don't think anybody would, would would really like disagree with that so i guess the question would be like when do you prioritize like the resources towards putting that in you know what i'm saying i mean like, would that be like really high up on your list of things that you want to put into the game or um I... would you prefer to focus on some other aspects maybe it wouldn't be super high up on my list right now but i think one of the things people have been asking for is things to do other than just grinding or things related to battle in the game so maybe um per patch they can add something like a casino so add casino one patch add personal quarters another patch and that can supplement the battle type activities um, and also appease those people who are looking for something other than battle to do. Especially with like the gameplay loop that we're in now. Just to freshen it up and give people other options. And yeah. another thing I think it will do is make it so that people who want to stay on the game and do something um, that isn't battle related. Uh, such as like maybe go idle or something like that. I'm pretty sure those same people wouldn't mind actually going to the casino or decorating their personal quarters. Something to that degree. Yeah. What, how would you suppose we would get materials for the personal quarters? Like, will we need more interactables out in the field? Um, you know, choppable trees and, you know, destroyable, just more destroyable things as opposed to just like the, the ores that we use for um, making weapons and stuff like that. Well, that's another thing. That actually leads to... The next thing I would like to see, which is, I would love it if there were, uh, if there was the ability to gather more things other than ores. Like for instance, the ores are on the rocks, like around this area, you'll find ores on rocks, which is cool. But what about next to this tree over here or near these cacti, like some other things, like some vegetation or some lumber or something that you can gather and use toward making items for your personal quarters or maybe even toward creating like new skins or something to that degree. I would love to see um, the ability to gather more than just match for food and ores, um, perhaps some fishing and things like that like i think it would be i think the addition of new things to gather would be the best way to get the materials you need to make um things for like your quarters or even if you can't make them because i know we don't have crafting just to be able to exchange 
like say some supply missions here gather these supplies this npc can make this thing for you and go from there so from furniture to statues to maybe a jukebox in your room those sort of things just bring back some of that base nostalgia so understanding that this game works a little different than the last one did with it being an open world and all that right how would gathering work in an open world like wouldn't players just smash everything and then by the time you get there there's nothing left or would it work similarly to like the ore that's already in the game to where it doesn't matter if someone else smashes it yours is still there i suppose i i think that would be best and i also think that having some nodes of things that don't immediately respawn or that's on a timer would be cool too um i mean except fishing like i think fishing it would be pretty acceptable to just have certain spots where you can fish and you know you fish to your heart's content or for as much bait as you have something to that degree i think that would be understandable but for everything else let's say like maybe near like this tree there's three nodes of some sort of palm wood on the ground so for your instance of the game you can pick those up and then it's on a timer similar to the minerals And you know, now that you mentioned it, um, those activities could bring players together. I think it'd be really cool too if they had uh, like use of the verticality in the game. So some um, ore gathering that like maybe there would be like some kind of a device like a kite or something that will allow you to go vertical so you can like gather um, flying creatures that you would use to either make things or um, to use for like food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be pretty unique, right? If you could just go in the air and grab stuff as opposed to everything being on the ground. For sure. Like, I think that would be rather unique too. And I think a lot of people would really like that sort of thing. So, um, my next thing would be that I would love to see world bosses. I would love for, say, Radom, Kavaris, and Elio each to have one boss that's on a set timer in a 32-man room, just have its own region. It's the only real place that it spawns. That way, you bring together people who are looking for a challenge, um, make it spawn maybe twice a week, uh, once during the week, and once on the weekend, and have it drop like some pretty awesome stuff um because let's be honest the drops right now are kind of lackluster and i think that would be a pretty nice way to just make it so that in addition to what i'm anticipating the geometric labyrinth is probably gonna have which is updated drops per patch also have like a world boss where you have to like break parts and everyone has to work together and maybe you have to formulate these groups that come together twice a week to kill it um yeah. i think that would be a really nice experience as well just something different from the gigantics because the gigantics they spawn whenever there's a storm and that's cool but just a, a bit of a change of pace something where you have to break more parts um similar to an actual like raid i think that would be really cool and then it would bring a lot of people together especially those people who are looking to really like use these armors and these weapons that they have like put them to good use and do so in a way that will exhibit jolly cooperation for lack of a better thought of words what do you think all right my concern there would be um availability mm -hmm. um just like hearing you kind of mention it reminds me a little bit of the old school rainstorms and we'll know when the heck stuff is going to happen there's no announcements and everyone's just waiting for the rain and all that stuff mm -hmm. um granted like <clears throat> it wouldn't be a one-for-one because one, maybe like we know when that two time a week boss would spawn 
Yeah. But that doesn't account for when you're available to play it. Like you could literally, you know, you could only play from maybe you work and you can only play from like five to nine. But mm -hmm. the boss on at like three p.m. while you were at work, and so you couldn't do the boss. Um, so I could imagine people complaining about that, um, especially if it was only two times a week that it spawned. So the mm -hmm. spawn rate would probably have to be multiple times a day, in which case it would be similar to the UQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, obviously, we would have to have like some really unique loot and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be pretty cool. Um, but the spawn rate, it just the spawn rate would have to be like. I don't know. The spawn rate would have to be in, like it would have to be fine tuned, and also um, like the location that it spawns at mm -hmm. and how that interacts with the multiple blocks. So, um, so if one spawns at three o'clock, does it spawn? Does one spawn at three o'clock in each block? And if it does, do people do what they used to do with the gigantics, where um, you know the gigantic would spawn and then you would drop it with a big like gigantic killing group and then um you would go to another block and then kill another gigantic um before the rain stops and all that stuff because i think like some of that similar behavior would happen depending on like does it all spawn in one block or multiple blocks and um and then like where does it spawn is also a thing like is it random like could it be in north south central whatever or is it always in central um if it could, if it did spawn anywhere, would that incentivize players to hang out in places that they wouldn't normally hang out at just for the off chance of it spawning? And then mm -hmm. would people be happy with that? Would they find ways to track it so that way they know where it spawns, they know where to be at? Mm -hmm. So um, all of those things kind of come to mind. Like, the, I think the idea is really cool. They would just have to be careful about how they execute it and, um, and try to make it a little uh, unique from um an urgent quest or from a uh gigantic like somehow make it not the same okay. i think it'd be pretty cool too if it was like a world traveler like just a totally exclusive type of enemy that's um that represents the region that it's not represented in any other content form so it's not like you also fight that enemy in a uq or you also fight that enemy as a as a uh, a boss from like a um freaking a pse burst or anything mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um just a totally unique thing that moves like crazy and forces you to like really get into your kit i think that would be pretty cool mm, okay um well regarding like how many times um they could always add another time a week um like maybe midweek so once toward the beginning months midweek and once during the weekend um but I, I think start with two times a week just to see once during the week and once during the weekend. Um, once during the week and once during the weekend, to be clear. Um, I think for this isn't going to be like randomized either. There would be a timer that first comes out and then things adhere to that timer. Unless, you know, maintenance happens or whatever, then the timer would reset. So it'd be kind of like a... a Similar to how they're doing the UQs that are pre-announced. Just do something like that. As yeah. for the blocks, I would say, and this this is me, I think that if it appeared in every block, that would be a bit much. It should probably just appear in one region, like Halfa Lake. Let's say that maybe they have different plans for Halfa Lake, but if each region has an area similar to Halfa Lake, like its own region where it had its own world boss, then it should just probably be one instance. Um, so you only go to this block to fight that boss because my idea is that this boss wouldn't be something that everyone is able to to take on. Um, it would See, be like then, a real challenge. With they might like, have to open up the, the block then in that case because um, if you have a 32 man block and that's the only place that the boss spawns, then it'll have that deafness farm issue where like the block is full, all the players are right there, but there's not enough space for you to be able to get in there and do it with a team or just do it at all. Um, then maybe they can do like a certain number of blocks that will actually appear in, but they would have to measure that based on how many people are actually trying to take it on. 
Like mm-hmm. in the very beginning, people might try to, but I imagine that there would be BP restrictions and all that to make it so, you know, a lot of people just aren't going to be able to do it. But a lot of it would have to be played by ear. Um, I just think it would be a really cool thing to implement some sort of um, world boss. Yeah. But there's yeah, a lot I think to think be about. Cool, especially if you hit like rare enemy, hard to kill, requires a lot of people, doesn't come out all the time. Really cool weapon. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Weapon skins, things for personal quarter. Hey, eh? hey. Eh? Yeah, some yeah. some some augments that only drop from the one enemy, stuff like that. Maybe like a huge like alpha reactor called an alpha like megas reactor alpha. or something like that. <laughs> alpha alpha <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's um that idea and i do have one more thing so what i would love to see is i would love for the exchange shop like the npc that's in the city that exchanges things i would love to see them given a having like a bit of a rework like i want to be able to exchange some of the stuff that has clearly lost its value out on the field and maybe get some cool skins or maybe get like some nice things for personal quarters or maybe like be able to trade a ticket or something for some casino currency i don't know i just i think that there's an opportunity there for these things that we have that really have clearly lost their value on in like the field that we're getting these drops and like the geo lab and all this that we're, we're just not going to use like these thesis armors or you know these civiza swords like why not have it where you get a certain amount of these and you exchange them and when you exchange enough, then like maybe you'll get a nice skin, like an an altered skin or something, or maybe you'll be able to trade in that many for like I don't know a gold sword, like one of those um one of these these gold sword things, um like a gold sword Amati gold prim yeah well the yeah. Amati we already you know we've had that come out but maybe even some things that you really can't get out in the field like maybe some relic skins that would be nice yeah. like just to add some value back to these things that are clearly only like 1k on the market board give them some sort of purpose again because <sighs> sega knows we get a lot of them like we're not running out of them they keep tossing them at us and we just keep throwing them in the trash so um what are your thoughts on that um yeah i think uh i wonder if like some of that stuff can be accomplished through the the, the title system like you know if, if you've obtained this total amount of prim armor then you get this reward and it's not just five star gems mm-hmm. um only the only reason i say that is because uh, particularly when it comes to like prim armor and you know prim swords and stuff like that mm-hmm. is uh because we've we've been lobbying for um for auto sell right yeah so if we get auto sell then the idea is that we're not going to be keeping those items so um i would prefer to not have to go into my inventory all the time as opposed to being like all right let me just like sift through this and figure out which of these prim armors or um, thesis armors and stuff i want to exchange i'd rather it just sell but um at the same time uh the accumulation of those items being rewarded is also um a pretty cool idea the, the question is how right so um that i also think that they can make use of these these rare enemies a little better like you find a gold um team or like a silver team or whatever mm-hmm. and they just give you more meat or yeah. <laughs> more seafood um maybe those things could drop like special things that we'd be able to exchange um for for more cool 
for more cool items and more cool things and stuff like that so that way we'll be more incentivized to try to um like farm these guys up yeah like right now it's just like if we see one it's like oh it's cool you know it's cool to see that guy over there and kill it and get a little bit of extra crispy meat but right it's not like oh crap like back back in like old pso like if you saw like the blue rappy or the blue hilda bear or like i don't know just just one of the rare enemies you know like one of the the lilies or whatever mm -hmm. you knew that you were in for like something really cool like that red box would drop and you're like holy smack like this is going to be a, the greatest thing and then it's a full-time drop but right we're not going to talk about full-time <laughs> drops but um like that was really cool and i think that bringing back some of that uniqueness to the the rare enemies um perhaps like i said putting giving them the item that we'd be able to exchange for some more like desirable things like a relic skin or stuff like that would be really cool yeah i mean i can definitely see that well i appreciate your thoughts and with that being said let us know what you think down in the comments we would love to hear from you and if you like this type of content make sure to hit that thumbs up to help out the channel and subscribe if you're looking forward to seeing more awesome gaming content from us uh btb you got any final words Bring back the Alliance tree. Bring back the Alliance quarters. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to have to do a another video. That's a five things you would love to see. But special thanks to Bedtime Buddy for joining me once again. And to all the AKN supporters, I appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching this video. And until next time, take care, my dears. Bye. Bye.